Hey family, how are you all doing? I know it's been a month now and I have missed you so much. You know, sometimes we have to step back and retreat and pray and reset and just have the Holy Spirit pour into us so that we can pour out to you. And so I was in the place of prayer recently and then this message just pops up in my spirit. The five tests of destiny. I know the subject of destiny is not one that is so alien especially in the body of Christ. When you go to the secular world, destiny is what we call or what they call purpose. But when you come to the body of Christ, now purpose becomes destiny. So I want us to look at the five attacks of destiny. Every person in the pathway of life, you have to go through the process of becoming. And I know for as long as you carry the seed of God and everyone carries the seed of God, God has to take you through a process, a process of making, a process of becoming, so that you can reflect His image in fullness. And so in the journey of us becoming, it's never an easy journey, it's never a smooth run. There are things that we have to go through. We have to go through the fire, we have to go certain testing, we have to go through the process. So what are these five tests of destiny? Now, the first test of destiny is the test of the flesh. Now, this features our appetites, our lust, and our desires. Every person has inherent desires that are activated when you neglect the place of intimacy with God. Because, you know, the way we have been wired as human beings, it's only the presence of God that can neutralize our humanity, that can neutralize the appetites that we have so in our process of becoming and attaining destiny attaining greatness and being a blessing to a generation there's gonna come a time where the enemy will activate your lust you begin to have appetites for, for lustful things your former desires your former your former lust will begin to resurface again so you must get to a place where you build muscles so that when the day of testing when the day of adversity comes you don't lose your destiny in the bed of fornication and let me talk to to my dear young people one of the things that i have promised god and promised my generation is that i will not just display my trophies and hide my scars we are made of flesh and blood and for as long as you are a human being there's gonna come a point in your life where your, your, your flesh is going to do that thing, where your appetites are going to be so intense. So you have to build muscle in the place of prayer. You have to build muscle so that when that day of testing comes, when that guy shows up, when that fine lady shows up, your flesh will not take the better part of you. You will not lose your destiny in the bed of fornication so that is the first test that you must go through but remember to build muscles to build capacity for you to say no to the advances of the flesh for you to say no to the appetites of your body you know the apostle paul tells us in the book of second timothy 2 2 this is a charge to his son timothy he tells timothy that flee also your youthful lust but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the name of the Lord with a pure heart. Now, when I read this in NLT, this is a charge to every young person out there. God has called you to ministry. This is what Paul tells Timothy that run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Follow anything that makes you want to do right. Pursue faith and love and peace and enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with a pure heart. Let me focus on the part A that Paul tells us as young people that we should run from anything that stimulates, that stimulates youthful lust and follow anything and everything that makes us want to do right. Let me tell you. It's not that the temptations are never going to show up. They are going to show up. Whether you're anointed or not, 
one thing about the anointing is that the anointing attracts. The anointing is going to attract fine girls. The anointing is going to attract fine men. The anointing is going to attract all sorts of people. And so what Paul tells us as young people, he's telling us to literally flee, to literally run from everything that stimulates, that stimulates, that activates lustful desires. In us. Now, the second test of destiny that we must all go through is the test of the heart. Now, this is a very interesting subject because God is so interested in our hearts. God is more interested in your heart more than he is interested in your assignment. These features were the real intents and the real motives of our hearts and our pursuit for God is exposed and revealed. We get to a place where we understand that, oh, I was not pursuing God because I love God. But I was pursuing God with so much zeal because I want to excel in ministry, because I want to be popular, I want to be famous. I want to influence my generation. So as you keep growing in destiny, as you keep growing in God and in the things of God, your heart is going to be tested. You know, David said that, Search my heart, O Lord, and see if there, there be any deceit in it, and see if there be any guile in my heart. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah that the heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can understand it? And so we have to come to a place where we don't trust the intentions of our hearts, and we have to tell God every single day, God, search my heart. Have I developed any appetites? Am I doing ministry because I it's pure love for you? Or have I been swept in the wave of accolades and the honor of men? Am I moving by the wave of popularity? Am I doing ministry as, as a sense of duty, as a call of duty? Or am I concerned about the souls of men and bringing men to Christ? So we have to get to that place where we tell God, God, help me die today. God, I don't trust my heart. Search my heart. See if there be any guile. See if there be any deceit in my heart. And bring me to a place of purity. A place of pure motives in serving you. You know, one time I was listening to an interview where they had featured Minister Dofila Sunday. And he was asked, how do you keep your altar burning? How do you keep the place of purity and he said something that i have kept till today he said that every day when he wakes up he tells the lord lord let me die today help me die today i don't know the appetites that i picked up yesterday i don't know the appetites that are awaiting me so help me die to self today perpetually dying to self. The other test of destiny is the test of love. I know people love to talk about love. People want to talk about love. I once listened to this message by a man of God and he said that if you don't touch on love when preaching, especially in a young people's meeting, you have not yet preached. But this is a very controversial subject that people don't want to delve in that people don't want to look into because when we speak about love we are speaking about emotions and not reason and if you don't master your emotions they will take you down the drain that is the same case if you don't master the place of love love and destiny it's gonna take you down the drain most people have lost their place of ordination in the place of love simply because someone told you they loved you. You gave up on your destiny, you gave up on your purpose. And this is my charge to you, especially to you, my dear young people. You have no business being in love if you have not found your place in destiny and in purpose. If you have not yet stepped into purpose, let love be the last thing in your mind. You are going to go through the test of love. You will fall in love with the wrong people. You will fall in love with good people, but not people that are good for your destiny. So give yourself time. Love that is out of season is going to destroy you. 
If you fall in love in a season where you're supposed to build capacity for destiny, it's going to make you mark time and you'll not reach the place of manifestation at the right time. One of the things about love, when it's untimely, it's going to derail you in the place of destiny and purpose. So first find God, build capacity, build muscles, begin to walk in purpose. And when God says now it's time for you to find love, he will bring the love to you. Stop chasing after love, chase after God. Let your heart not misbehave. Bring your heart under subjection and tell your heart, this is not the time we are pursuing after God. And one thing I know for sure, if you set your mind and your heart to pursue God, it's going to shut out every other distraction that is not from the Lord. So focus on God, searching after the heart of God. And focus on you first stepping into the place of destiny, into the place of purpose. Then love can come afterwards. Don't be the person that loses the place of assignment or their place of ordination simply because they found love. Let love amplify destiny and not derail it. The fourth test of destiny that everyone has to go through is the test of money. Now what money does is that money reveals the true character of our hearts. Whether you have money or not, in one way or another, it's going to reveal your true character. Because this is what happens when you don't have money, you're most likely to compromise because you have no options. But when you have the money, you're most likely to make wrong decisions because you have options, right? So we have to come to a place where we have mastered our appetite for money. No man can live uprightly by their own might and strength. You have to come under the submission and the government of the Holy Spirit so that money doesn't take the place of God in your heart. Trust me, you're going to be tested. You're going to go through the test of money. A season where you don't have the money, will you still keep your integrity or will you jump at the first instance where you have to compromise your integrity for you to pay your bills, for you to take care of your family. So remember that as you walk through destiny, there's going to come a season where you don't have plenty, where you don't have the money. You can't afford your rent. You can't afford to pay the bills. Will you still keep your integrity? And there's also going to come a season where you will have plenty. When you have options, Will you still keep your integrity when you have the option to book a flight and to go to a place where people don't know you? Will you still be faithful to your spouse? When you have the money to sponsor people, to sponsor organizations, will you still be faithful to write checks, to sponsor the ministry, to orphanages? This is something to ponder on. Will I be faithful when I don't have? Will I still keep my integrity? when I don't have, and will I still keep my character, my integrity, when in plenty? And now the final test of destiny is the test of time. Now this features our ability to stay for the long run, our longevity, our ability to stay when it's not easy. Every person, for as long as you're in the marketplace, the business or family, will you still be there? 20 years from now, 10 years from now, 5 years from now. Every great ministry must go through the test of time. Whatever God has not tested, he cannot prove. Whatever God has not tested, proven, he cannot release out to the nations. I know we are still young, we are still building, but give yourself to the test of time. Keep doing that thing, even when no one is clapping for you. You know, the thing about chasing purpose, destiny, or building vision is that no one is gonna clap for you at the infancy of your journey no one is gonna clap for you or even believe in you at the infancy of your vision when you are still building the foundation when you don't even know what you're doing but you're still doing it nobody is gonna clap for you but as you keep building you know the bible tells us in the book of Isaiah that gentiles shall come to your light 
and kings shall come to the brightness of your rising. Kings will only come when your light is so bright, so, so bright, when you have risen, when you have attained mastery. So you just keep building. When no one is clapping for you, keep building. You're still building the process. You're still going through the test of time. So will you have longevity? Will your ministry still stand 10 years from now? Will your business still stand 10 years from now? Will you do you have will you still have the continuity? Will you still have the same pattern of consistency even when it doesn't look like it? Even when no one is clapping for you, will you still stand the test of time? I hope this message has blessed you. I am praying for you and as always, I am rooting for you. Do not forget the five tests of destiny. The first test is the test of the flesh, the test of the heart, the test of love, the tests of money, and then the test of time. I'm rooting for you. I love you so much and God bless you.